night we will be collecting data on the Elephant Trunk Nebula. It is a bit of an ambitious target for me because it doesn't quite fit in the field of view of my telescope very well, but I've always wanted to shoot it, and tonight is the night. For tonight's setup, we have the Mead LX85 German Equatorial Go-To Mount. And riding on that is my Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain or SCT telescope and an Orion guide scope and guide camera and a ZWO 294MC Pro dedicated astronomy camera. And I apologize for being a little bit dark. It got darker than I thought it would this early. That's the nature of this OP. Now, probably my favorite thing and least favorite thing about this setup is the little finder scope here. It's basically just a little bit of a red dot. However, it's cheap, cheaply made in plastic. And I have to hold it together with this tape here. And sometimes I have to squeeze the button and forget the, the red dot to show up. And it's mounted on Velcro. <laughs> so it's not the most accurate thing, but it only needs to be somewhat accurate. To get, uh, to get my scope aligned. So what you're seeing me do here is perform a balance, or rather I'm verifying the balance of my mount. And the process of this is pretty simple. Um, I just put the telescope in various positions and make sure that it does not travel um, in any direction. Uh, so for this case, the telescope is pretty well balanced in the right ascension axis. It doesn't want to tend to move either way once it's the weight's at a good spot. I don't really balance the declination axis as much because the mount's kind of cheap and it doesn't balance very well on that axis, but I get it as close as possible. Once I'm happy with the balancing of the mount and the placement of the counterweight, I do my final checks to make sure it's ready to go. I switch over to my red light so I don't blast bright white light in my camera sensor. I check all my plugs and connectors, make sure the mount is level, and give it one final look over. Make sure the power plug is firmly seated, and turn it on. This next process is my star alignment process. I usually use a hand controller because it's simple and good enough to do. Uh, the first step has you just put in the date, pretty easy, and then it'll ask you for your time. Now your time doesn't have to be accurate down to the exact second. I mean, the more accurate you are, the more helpful it is. I generally just kind of give it to the closest 10 seconds and go from there. So once you get in all the appropriate information, uh, you get a little message saying initiating smart drive. And that's essentially just the mount gearing up and getting ready to start tracking a target. So, it gives you your alignment options. I have easy three star and two star. Um, I always go with two star just because that's the easiest way to do it. And easy mode, easy align does not work very well. And three star is a little bit overkill for what I want to do tonight. So, I'm just going through a list of stars and I'm going to pick the star in Ursa Major W or Doobie, however you want to pronounce it. I feel like about 80% of the time I'm selecting this star because it's very easily identifiable in the sky, even when there's lots of light pollution like where I live, and it's bright enough on your screen to be able to distinguish itself between other stars. So now that the mount has aligned itself to the star I want to align to, I'm going into my astrophotography tool to set up my capture. Um, I'm moving the stretch graph out of the way and I'm setting my cooling aid up and my live exposure times. I like to use this little cross section on my screen to help align the star. You'll see in a few minutes why. Um, so here I'm selecting live view and stretching the image so we can see the star and thankfully up here is in the field of view immediately. This doesn't always happen, and it's often the fault of my finder scope is so inaccurate, but luckily this time I was able to get it in field of view first time. So now you're going to watch me struggle to try to get it into the center of my screen so the mount knows where the star is in the sky. 
this process can be a little bit tricky, especially at night when you're trying to fumble with the arrow keys on the controller. Um, it doesn't, the star doesn't have to be smack dab in the center, I mean, it has to be as close as you can get. Obviously, the closer the better, but generally I'll just try to get it as close as possible and then I'll move on to the next. Um, usually, even if I do get a perfect alignment, I find myself adjusting the frame on my target a little bit. So, you just want this process to let your mount know where what is pointing at in the sky. So here I'm just making my final adjustments to just get the star down a little bit so I can at least touch the crosshairs in my alignment process. And I think here I accept that as good enough, or maybe I just adjust it one more time. There we go. So in my book that's pretty much close enough for a star alignment. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm going to be adjusting my frame later anyways. So I'm putting on a bat knob mask right now, and essentially that's just a focusing tool. The screen's not going to show it very well, but there's a little diffraction pattern that I use to measure how well focus I'm in. Um, I did this earlier and I was just double checking it here, and my focus looks good, so I'm going to take the batten off mask off and start my second star alignment process, which is just the same as the first except with a diff different star. So the next star I align to is Shadir. This is another good star that's easily identifiable in the sky, and it is also bright enough on the screen to be able to differentiate it from other stars. So I will leave my past self to get with the aligning and get with the photo taking. Then one of the last steps that needs to be done is to set up the guide camera. The guide camera uses a software called PHD2 Guiding, and all that needs to do is select a star in the screen there to lock onto, and it will track its movements as the sky moves and as the telescope moves. So there's a star selected, and the calibration process is going to start. The whole process takes a few minutes, so while that's happening, I will set the camera cooler to cool to minus 15 degrees Celsius and get back with you once everything is ready to go. Alright, the guide calibration process is completing and now we are auto-guiding. Uh, just a quick note here, when your gamma first starts to guide, it will kind of have a weird little dip like that in the beginning as the mount moves into position. Um, but generally, if your polar alignment's good and your star alignment's good, your curve will flat out like how it is there. When I'm imaging, I generally like to keep this window open down in the bottom left hand corner so I can keep an eye on my guiding graph and then we just start the imaging process. This is 25 images at five minutes each. I'm really hopeful that this is gonna turn out good.